everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Be Better Golf Live. I'm the host, Brendan DeVore. And with me, back again, is Monty Scheinblum, uh, as, as the 10 says, PGA Tour instructor and World Long Drive Champion. Where were you, Monty? I was in Chicago, and uh, it was cold and windy and rainy. And uh, as they can, my, my voice is already nasally enough, and I already sound like a 90-year-old woman with emphysema. Yeah. But yeah. it's even worse. Yeah. So, uh, Monty, you were doing a clinic? Yeah, yeah. I had, I had uh, actually, I had three different groups. I had a, a small group in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Oh, cool. They asked me to stop there on the way to Chicago. Then I had a pretty big group in Chicago, and then another smaller group. So I was gone for eight or nine days. Great. Very cool. Very cool. Did you get to see any of the golf that was on TV last weekend? I, I, I watched a little of it. Little and little recap. Last weekend <coughs> excuse me. was the, remind me of the name of the tournament. Oh, the Zurich? Uh, the no, no. Uh, no. Uh, uh, that, James Hahn won in a playoff. Uh, Wells Fargo. Yeah, Wells Fargo. Quill I knew it was one yeah, of those. Right, yeah, right. It's one of those uh, corporate ones. So, uh, yeah, James Hahn won in a playoff. The big story of the week was James Hahn had missed seven or eight cuts in a row, uh, was feeling super down in the dumps, and then came back and uh, started playing great out of nowhere and won. This is, you know, I, I wanted to especially talk about this. Okay. Because this is something that I make a big point about this. Yeah. Too many people ruin their golf swings by saying, oh, look, I like tour player X. He has a great swing. Yeah. Here's him at this position. Here's me at this position. Yeah. I don't look like that. I need to look like that. Mm -hmm. Horrific idea. Yeah. Terrible. What we should be looking at these guys for is their approaches to the game. Not only their course management, but more the way they approach their practice. Yeah. The way... James Hahn missed seven cuts in a row. He wasn't doing what most amateur, at, at, at an amateur golfer level, missing seven cuts in a row is an eight handicap, not breaking 90 for like three weeks in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty disheartening. And instead of, oh, I'm going to try this tip, I'm going to try that tip, I'm going to try this tip, and then going back and forth and just wrecking themselves worse. Han said, okay, I know I'm good. I've won before. There's something not quite right. Yeah. And I need to refine something small. Mm -hmm. So after missing seven cuts in a row, instead of just jumping from one tip to another, he kept kind of staying the course, found something small that he was doing wrong, and we're going to talk about that, I'm sure, shortly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, won a PGA Tour event. And the lesson that can be learned from this is if you've been good, and somebody who's an eight handicap is a very good golfer. Yeah. If you've been good for a long time and you hit a bad stretch, you don't all of a sudden go out and start searching the world. Oh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you're, you're not an eight anymore. You're a 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what lesson can be learned from this mm -hmm. is when you're struggling, it's golf. It happens to everybody. Except for Tiger Woods, 1997 through 2008, and you know Nicholas, most of his career, everybody struggles with their golf game at one time or another, and you don't, you know, throw everything. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, yeah. and that's what can be learned from this. And this is way more important for the average golfer and the above-average golfer than any swing idea they could get from from him. And he has a great swing. Yeah, you know, and. If you looked at his swing from, excuse me, the seven missed cuts, yeah. and this last weekend, you wouldn't tell much of a difference. No. The hard thing, the hard thing to know as a golfer is when to, uh, when to stay the course and keep grinding and keep your head down and keep working on something, and when it when it's time to okay, this has not worked. Right. Let's abandon this. I've I've got to do something. You, uh, Monty, you always talk about. Uh, the key for golfers to get better is to find that one or two little movement things that's really holding you back. Correct. And it's usually a swing. It's some kind of technical swing thing or it's, it's or idea that you have in your head. Even for a 25. Yeah. I mean, for a 25 to get down to a three, unless he's going to devote every day, that's not realistic. 
But a 25 can get down to a 15 or an 18, no yeah. problem. At every person at every level trying to get to the level below, it's not a complete swing rebuild. It's one thing at a time. You find the most egregious thing going on. There you go. And yeah. you fix it. Mm -hmm. So for, now we're back to the James Hahn thing. Yeah. He had developed a little bit of a slide. So what, what I could see, and maybe in the YouTube version, guys, tune into that. I'll, I'll cut this video in here that James did with Body Track. So watch that. Okay, now we're back. And so what James was talking about there in that video, Monty, was that he was getting to his left early right. in the downswing. Correct. Real early. And he was leaving everything behind, and uh, that was causing a two-way mess. Yes. You basically have to stall and flip to get to the ball. Right. Something we talked about a lot on this channel. Right. And uh, and what what was and George Gankis, Dana, and you all teach a kind of similar transition move. Well, what I mean, was he what was he working on? I mean, it's it's a actually you know what Dana and George teach is very very similar. I, I don't want to say what I teach is yeah. similar. It's, it's some it's elements a, of it. It's, it's yeah. the it's the same. Well, look, all good instructors are going to have the same similar ideas different way to explain it okay and George's and Dana's way is very very similar mm -hmm. and I believe could be wrong but I believe just a couple of weeks ago that um, Dana was working with Han something very very similar to what George was working on with you okay and you can see that move in that video with the body track that yeah. kind of it's, it's funny because when, when James is explaining it, uh, when James is explaining this move that a lot of people are doing now, you see it real obviously he's doing this this move. But then in his golf swing, it's not there. No, no. All it is yeah. is, I, you know, I've even said it on some of the forums. I shouted out to George and, uh, and Dana that, you know, w w when I, I don't want stealing the idea. That's not really the you know, learning from somebody else a different way to present the information. Yeah. That move that, that they teach is a really, really good way to get good players who slide, who get too much laterally, yeah. to do it correctly. And you could see when, uh, pardon me, I'm all stuffed up. It's all right. Um, you can see when Han um, demonstrated what he was doing wrong, you could see not only was his lower body sliding, but he was bringing the upper body with it. Yeah. And whenever the upper body the moves laterally, was moving. whenever the upper body moves laterally, the arms are going to trail. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and what about arms trailing behind you makes it so difficult to square the face to the ball? Well, what happens is, is your lower body runs out of range of motion. Okay. And then mm -hmm. it has to stall and wait for the arms to catch up. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm not a big passive arm guy. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to sit here and absolutely say the rotation of the body points where the club goes yeah. and controls the rotation of the golf yeah. club. Mm -hmm. But if your arms are too passive, right. that can't happen. And there's a bunch of different ways to fix it. Um, and low handicappers, mini tour level players, tour level players... When they start sliding, that Gankus Dahlquist move is, as far as I'm concerned, a very, very good way to get a good player out of that big slide. Especially for a lot of uh, junior golfers and a lot of very athletic people who are or very flexible or athletic people go into golf, that they have the, you have this feeling in your body that that's going to give you a lot of power. This this slide early to to the left, and and you see a lot of. You see a lot of motion this way, like this is going to do something, right? And you just see almost no rotation. That you get know, like, well, you know, a lot of golf instruction has been about, and I've said this time and time again, is about fixing the beginner over the top slicer. Yeah. And then it just gets pushed too far in the other direction, where everybody's firing the hips and swinging out to right field and thrusting the hips mm -hmm. and getting no rotation. Yep. And then. There's also the part where the rotation just takes way over. Yeah. And you know about that. You had a little bit of trouble mm -hmm. with that. But quite honestly, it's a balance. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've known this intuitively for a while, but I just had it confirmed the other day. Is I've always talked about that 
hip speed doesn't create club head speed. It just plain doesn't. Right. And uh, I just got that confirmed the other day when I was told that the average hip speed on the LPGA Tour is higher than the average hip speed on the PGA Tour. Now, you're not talking about percentage-wise. You're just talking about raw speed. The speed of the hips is faster. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And obviously... It's funny because a lot of things you see on YouTube and stuff, they say, uh, oh, the hips are a force multiplier. If the hips go one half of a mile an hour faster at the hips, that's going to translate through the chain to, okay. be, to be 40 miles an hour faster by the, the club head. Oh, well... Or whatever it is. Yeah, that's what they say. It's a, you know, it, it, it times two here, times two here, times two there. There is some truth to that, but it's not pure, it's not purely true. Right. Um, you know, let, in, in, you know, the thing that this new 3D stuff and kinematic sequence yeah. you know, stuff is proving is that, you know, the, the, the body part that equates most to club head speed is speed of the left arm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and... Yes, if you have a proper sequence, somebody with 10% higher hip speed with the subsequent, yep. you know... Down the chain, everything it, it's all It's yeah. all good. Yeah. It's yeah. all good. But you can't just get up there and spin your hips around and think, oh, that's going to get maximum club head speed because it's just, it's just not true. Because if you look at sequence charts, you know, the hip, the hip curve is barely a little tiny molehill. Yep. Yep. And the left arm is a very big peak. Yeah, you know we've talked about this before. Yeah. You know, the left arm is is, but if your pivot is poor, then you know your left arm is doing yeah. all the work yeah. and you're pointing it in the wrong direction and not so, being so, fed by the other things. So at all. Yeah. so you can't just sit here and say oh it's all lower body or it's just arm speed. You have to have a proper balance and you know get the most of everything so to speak now a teacher from australia and also some other guys from australia i don't know if this is an australian thing or what it is but uh started to say started to write to me that the kinetic sequence is junk science and basically they (coughs) said anyone can prove that even the smoothest of this is an analogy take the smoothest of knives and you can prove that it's serrated if you use a strong enough microscope so that's what the, when when we did the video about the kinetic chain, and I was expecting to see like uh, before this all this technology came out, David Ledbetter put out a book saying like, oh, you, the bump will be like this, and then clearly like this, and like that, and, and instead it's like they're really close to being on right. top of each other, and you got to magnify it a lot to see that chain. Correct. And when you're talking about the intervals, we're talking about like hundredths of a second, not even that, yeah. thousandths of a second. So you got to zoom in so much to the fact that. I can understand why these Australian guys are saying that kinetic chain can be thought of as like pseudoscience. Well, again, yeah. there's always a middle ground. Mm-hmm. It's not the be all end all. Yeah. It, it's a way, basically I use it as a way to say, look, I use it the reverse. I yeah. say, look, it's not all hip speed. Right. Okay. Yeah. And if you look really, really carefully, the acceleration curves of the hips, thorax, and left arm, and club at the beginning of the downswing all go together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the lower body does not, in fact, lead. It only appears to lead because of the way the body is unwinding. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it really, really carefully, everything kind of moves together. It's just the hips turn less than the shoulders, the arms are across the shoulders, and the club's behind the arms. So there's a a 2D appearance on video that the hips go first, the thorax goes second, yeah. and so on and so on forth. On TV, they always talk about, look at Tiger Woods, the stretch in his shirt. His polo is being stretched, but it's, I mean, it's there already. And then and then you see this little pulling, but it's also still moving too. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, yeah. It, but I think what they're trying to say is, is that the things moving in sequence is so infinitesimal that if you're trying to do it on purpose, it's 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 terrible. Yeah. You know, it, it if there is a small interval, it happens by itself. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to go. Oh yeah, forget it. Forget good it. Good luck. No, you know, good uh, luck with that. You could get the yips, the driver yips, or something else real bad, really yeah. easily. Trying to think of that stuff. Yeah. The thing, the most valuable thing, and everybody's going to get something different out of it. The most valuable thing I saw when we did the my swing thing was not so much the kinetic chain, but more showing where 
these different pieces of my body were in 3D space, most notably the arm well, adduction yes, here. Yes. Uh, that got squeezed and also where the knees were. So seeing this avatar and being able to spin it, right. I think that's the real, for me anyway, that's the real uh, benefit to it. Right. And, yeah. and, and you saw on that thing that, you know, your hips and thorax did in fact move yeah. crunch and, this. and crunch this. Mm, yeah. and, and so that's, you know, you don't want that. Thank you guys for being patient. We're going to get to your questions now. I know I already read one of them, so I'm going to go to it now. Somebody uh, uh, is having a hard time with the, the right elbow forward yes. feeling. Yes. And they're getting a lot of block. Absolutely yeah. right. Okay. Look, when... any Excuse me, Monty. Any more questions, guys? Just write them in there now. The right elbow forward mm -hmm. is a move for the guy that you know, fires his body and gets a big gap here. Yep. Or the guy that pulls on the shaft and gets a really vertical Steep, yeah. and the elbow works like this. Yeah. Okay. Oop. That's okay. The the right elbow move, it it drops the shaft. Uh -huh. It makes the shaft work horizontally. Okay. And, and lays it down. Lays and it lays down. it down. Yeah. And that's a opening the club face works this way. Yeah. Okay? So yes. When you first do that, your body is used to being in this position. So in relation to the golf ball down here, that's where the club face is. Mm -hmm. So your body is used to hitting the ball with the club face in this position. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you've gone like that. Now the club face is in this position and the same move is that way. Right, so to counteract the right elbow forward, laying the face open, what do you have to do okay. to square it up? The arms work together. Yeah. In, 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 you know, Congress. in Congress. Yeah. Okay. So when you're going like this, if the left arm rotates and falls, it's a mess. If you're in this position. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to this position, the left arm has to rotate and fold okay. in order. But if the shaft is already tipped over and you go like this, yeah. good luck. So like uh, Hank Haney says a lot, uh, Changes have to come in twos sometimes. Most so, of the time. You, most of the time. You know, yeah. because mm -hmm. what you're, I mean, this is a really gross oversimplification. Yeah. But when you're making a swing change, you're dealing with not only the fault that you have in your swing, yeah. but the compensating move that used to kind of get the ball out there where you want in spite of that fault. Yeah. So. Yes, when you first try to get that right elbow forward, the ball's going right. And you just have to start getting the left arm to work correctly, too. Okay. There, there, I have a video. It's called How the Arms Work Together. And okay. if you do a YouTube search for that, it explains what I just talked about. Okay. Henry Chang has been doing the no-turning cast drill, but when he tries to blend the left hand in with the cast of the right hand, he hits a lot of fat shots. Okay. It's the same thing that people when they use my short game method, yeah. they tend, they first thing they do is they hit it fat, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of them. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is, is they, they're they only accelerating to that spot. Okay. okay. They're ending at the ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get, I mean, to me, in all good golf swings, whatever the method, Yeah. this body part, the humerus bone, from the shoulder to the elbow gets forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, some guys get it forward very, very late. Jim Furyk would be an example of that. Yeah. Okay, but you watch all good golf swings at some point, the shoulder and the elbow get forward. Yeah. Okay, and if you're just going like this, you're going to be in behind the ball. Yeah. You, you know, every every drill, every feel, you're trying to get this move going right here. Yeah. Because as you can see, when this gets forward. The body pivots, the body rotates, the right wrist doesn't unload yep. too early, all that good stuff. Yeah, I, when, when I, I came to Monty with the same issue after I had been had I had initial amazing success with the no turn cast, and then I started having some uh, face issues and also some some fat shots. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but the difference in it is between doing this and doing this. Correct. It's it's got to really be a shell and. You're going all the way through. So right. don't just feel this. You're feeling. Your uh, my feeling was that the left wrist when I first, when the right wrist when I was first doing it was the the engine of the entire golf swing. Right. That went like that. It wasn't just 
you know, the, 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 a lot of yeah. people like to use the skipping stone analogy. Yeah. You wouldn't skip a stone like this. Right. You know? Right. You'd skip the stone like that. Yeah. You know? So it's, you know, no drill, no feel, no idea is yeah. foolproof. Mm -hmm. Or else everybody would be good at golf. And what as Bobby Jones said, it, there's no drill that's so perfect that it can't be done to you start messing it up. Right. Absolutely. This is a good question because I'm doing it. I'm going to be doing a video soon on some virtual reality stuff that a company is is doing with me. Uh, 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 somebody's asking, what is the and, and this is such a broad question, but I think we can handle it. What is the best swing on tour right now for a mid handicapper to look at? So, like, I remember one time at I think it was at Bay Hill in early 2000s, Tiger Woods beat Bart Bryant. In, in the playoff, and Bart's brother, Brad, Brad, said, people need to stop looking at Tiger Woods' swing and look at guys like my brother and for, for what they should be trying to do. Right. So nowadays on tour, who do you think is a good guy for, let's say, Joe Sixpack or whatever? You know, I've always said that the, 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 the best swing on the tour as far as, you know, the simplest, the least motion, was always Steve Stricker's. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would be, to me, that would be the one. I don't like emulating yeah. swings mm -hmm. of any kind. Yeah. But Stricker's swing was always very, very simple. Um, and the reason why I liked it is he was one of the few guys that wasn't in there, you know, trying to bury the right wrist angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And even, at, I mean, I mean, he was winning yeah. on tour in the, his mid and late forties, and a lot longer than TV gave him credit for. You right, know, a, a much longer player, and just that. a phenomenal wedge player, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, in his prime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So check that out. I know that I remember Johnny Miller at one point had said that he thought when Steve Stricker was at his highest, he thought that that was going to be the swing of the future, that a lot of guys were going to start adopting it. It didn't really catch on. That's. Yeah. I mean. If if the average golfer, you know, the average good golfer, mm -hmm. you know, the five to fifteen handicap, yeah. if you're going to emulate a golf swing, if you're going to look at a golf swing and say, okay, this is to me that would be the best one. Watch that for me. Hey, a little shout out. We have a uh, one of our Tofu Clan is uh, one of our viewers. He's twelve years old. Thanks for watching. He's asking. Uh, okay, so if you're going through a swing change. But you still want to play good golf. Sure. Right. So let's say you're going through a swing change and it's pretty, like, to you anyway, to the golfer, pretty severe. But you don't want to, you know, be, you know, waiting six months to play decent golf. How can you play good golf on the course when you're going through a swing change? You've got the two, the two camps is, you know, here's my 17-step swing checklist that, you know, I need to do all these things. Yeah. And then you got the other guys go, I just swing your swing. Yeah. Again, the extremes are always wrong. Okay. What you want to do is, is when you're working on something, leave most of the stuff on the range. But you got to bring one key to the golf course. Yeah. Whatever that is, it's going to be different, especially when you're going through a swing change. But even if you've got your swing, there's always, you got to go in there and say, you know, okay, I'm going to feel this today. And it, it should always be. I always say, have three or four different ideas that produce the same movement. Right. And then when you're on the range, you're like, all right, yeah, yeah. I need to move the ball back a little bit. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You know, that ha every tour player is out there on the range going, okay, perfect, yeah. go play. Yeah. Or, all right, ball's taking off a little right in my starting yeah. line. All right, I'm going to move the ball forward an inch. There it is. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And tour players seem to have the dis the mental discipline to be able to stick with that through a round of golf a lot more than than you know the average golfers. The well, average golfer will hit a bad shot and, and that that tip is gone. Right. You know, let me start going through the roll of that. Right. I mean, yeah. well, actually, the guys that are playing well are doing what you said. Yeah. The guys that are playing poorly are doing the same things all the six and eighteen handicaps yeah. are yeah. doing. Yeah. You That's know. What I mean. Yeah. And and and. and you know, the, the guys that are shooting 153, 77, 76 and missing the cut yeah. are having the same struggles as the four and five handicapper who are shooting 85. Yeah. So um, the, the, the rule of thumb is 
is if you miss a shot, big deal, try to hit the next one better. If you hit the same miss five in a row, then you need to start thinking about a small adjustment. So thanks everybody for tuning in. All right, Henry Chang again is asking, all right, one more question. Is it good to lead the downswing with the right shoulder? If you're this guy, no. Yeah. You know, if you're this guy, yes, yeah. absolutely. Monty and I did a, did a video on uh, Be Better Golf where the, in the title it says deep and out. And if that's you, as far as what I was doing at that point, then yeah, like you can go deep in the backswing and then work it out on the through swing, you know. But you got to be the right player for that to work for. And, and yeah. you know what? This is a, a gross generalization, but generally speaking, lower handicappers who are having trouble with blocks and hooks, mm -hmm. right shoulder out's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Higher handicap golfers that are having trouble with pulls and slices, no bueno. So check your hips, guys. We're going to do one more question, then we're going to go to the part of the show where uh, we hit some shots. Okay, how do you shallow out the downswing with proper rotation of the body versus trying to manufacture it, dropping the hands or other compensation? Yeah, that, you know. So you see a lot of, a lot of instruction will say, you take the backswing, then you want the hands to go down uh, and then around. Yeah, or, that can, you know, see, if you want to properly lower, you know, because there are kind of shifting planes. Here's, I mean, essentially you're asking what's the secret to golf right. when you ask that question yeah. but generally speaking and again the more you yank on the on the butt of the club and try to bring your hands down it's almost the opposite you almost get the opposite effect because when people have trouble just you know letting the hands work out in front and when they hand, when they try to get the hands to work down generally it has the opposite effect they start tipping the shaft over even more. Okay, yeah. So the best way to do it is going to be individual, but you know, if you bring the right shoulder out and the hands out and you're not yanking on the on the shaft really hard, that'll the head will drop as this is coming forward yeah. and out. Um, um, you know, I keep coming back to that, you know, Gankus and Dana pivot move. When you do that right, that yeah. really lays the shaft down really, really well without manufacturing it. The best way that I found to do it, and uh, when you say it, let's just get back to the, the club point. head. As far as getting the club head more laid, less steep on the downswing, and Correct. get it down on this. Right. The best way that I found to people to get the feel is, um, you know, and this isn't new. This isn't my idea. People have, you know, said this forever is you know go up against the wall and take a backswing yeah where you know your regular backswing the club is touching the wall okay and slowly come down and bring your arms and hands out in front of you as your body's turning while the club drags yeah. on the wall just get that uh feedback right, right. yeah and what's going to happen is is when you do that you're going to be like oh okay well in order to do that i have to yeah it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. The thing that, uh, that, as far as we were talking about that uh, George's move, when I was there, um, he sees a big relation in when you come down, do the downswing and you shorten your radius, that steepens the shaft. Absolutely. And when you stay wide, that lays it off. That is so huge. I was trying to do his move, but I still had my old, I want to lag it a ton, so See, I shortened and, and it, and that now, would steepen the shaft. That's why I hate the lagging move so much yeah. because that's the best way to narrow that's your deeper. radius. Yeah. That's why that wide to narrow move that people preach yeah. drives me insane. Mm. I think that that's just awful in, in, in my opinion. Okay guys, uh, we're gonna kind of clear the set here and uh, right uh, there, right here if we can, uh, we're gonna hit a couple of shots So, and I'm gonna go through a few more questions. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. I wanted to announce that Be Better Golf now is coming out with our very first Be Better Golf t-shirts to commemorate our first 10,000 subscribers. So in the description of this video, you'll see a link that is gonna last for just a couple weeks because in only a few weeks, we're gonna pass 10,000 subscribers and once we do, the shirts will no longer be available. So they are, there's shirts and all, there's also hooded sweatshirts. They're really cool looking and uh, you'll be part of a very uh, small and exclusive club 
that was one of the very first 10,000 subscribers to Be Better Golf. It's going to be an amazing summer and rest of the year for Be Better Golf. So uh, get those shirts and you'll really be supporting this channel and all the content that we're trying to do. Thanks for watching and check the link in the description.